Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson with Nixine Publishing, coming to you for, from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And today we're doing something a little bit different. We have uh, James Baker here, who is the head of the Geek in, at Manchester, England. So James, welcome. It's good to have you at Nixine Publishing. Welcome, and it's great to be here today. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, today I have a question for you. So when, uh, when we talk about bringing products to market, um, what do you see as the most important thing to do as, as far as being able to bridge that valley between research and then coming forward? You know, you, you spoke about bringing the, all of the piece, people together and being able to do that online. And how can we do more of that across the board? Sure, yeah. So, so first of all, as you all know now, Graphene first isolated in the University of Manchester 2004 is still only 16 years young, as I often talk about. And if you compare that to an example to carbon fiber, it was probably 25 or 30 years from discovery through to first products and applications. But already with graphene, we're seeing products like shoes or paints or rubber on the market today. Yeah, I mean, I started off giving the case study of carbon fiber, or we could use silicon as another example where Great work takes place in the university labs, you know, great research, great fundamental research, low technology readiness level. And then we hit this so-called valley of death before we get products to market. So for me, one thing that we were very keen to address as well as the technology, and, and as you say, in Manchester today, we're now looking at over 100 other 2D materials. Yeah. Uh, again, a little bit of a plug. If you look online, um, Andre Gein, the Nobel laureate's latest paper is around two layers of twisted graphene. I'm sure yeah. Adrian will be looking into that. You know, so this is potential yeah. creating a perfect angle for the use in supercapacitors amongst other things. So we continue to do some great science and you know, today heterostructures, 2D materials, layered materials, graphenes as I often refer to it, there's still some great science going on. But we, we started to develop what we called the Manchester model, which as well as that great technology, we also had to address the innovation cycle. Now, how do we take that science from the lab into products and markets much quicker than traditionally it's taken? And part of that is about people. And as a university, we have great, clever people, scientists, but we needed the right partnership and collaboration with industry. Mm -hmm. So part of our model is about partnership and collaboration and the creation of supply chain. So supply chain has been something early, uh, was very important. To date, we've worked with over 150 different organizations from large corporates like Airbus and VA Systems through to small SMEs, small businesses, through to startups and spin outs from the university. So it's a very diverse ecosystem of, of industry we've worked with. So supply chain, partnership and collaboration has been key to, to our model. We're a university, so we don't want to be responsible for making graphene. So actually getting companies who can make graphene, not by the gram, by the kilo and by, or by the ton, has been a key part of that strategy. But also, as well as supply chain, we've also been working with companies like the National Physical Laboratory, MPL in the UK, NIST in the US, um, the Standards Organization, ISO, um, BSI in the UK. Because standards, measurement, characterization is also equally important. So we've put a lot of emphasis on partnership and collaboration with industry, with the right other partners, be they institutes, be they lawyers, IP lawyers, investment houses. The other part for me that's been quite key is, is the whole innovation model. We were very fortunate in Manchester that we had 61 million pounds to build a national graphene institute that built as a fantastic state-of-the-art iconic building in the center of Manchester that really was dedicated to bring together that great science and to bring the physicists, the Andre Guy and the Kostya Novoselov, working alongside the material scientists, the, phys uh, the, the um, other engineers from the university, but doing that in a much more concurrent and integrated way. But we also had the 60 million pound graphene engineering innovation center, the geek, yeah. who were able to really design to fill this gap so we designed the Geek around a principle that in the UK, they're catapults, an organization set up by the UK government to bridge the valley of death. In America, you have the agencies like DARPA that also came up with like a grand challenge type philosophy where industry led, 
big challenge and how do we bring together the right organizations to rapidly produce prototypes or, or demonstrators. Things like the Skunk Works and the Phantom Works are probably good examples to our audience in the US. In the UK, you know, similar types of organization. So the Geek was really modeled on good practice from the UK, from the US, from the Fraunhofer's in, in Germany, and really modeled about creating an innovation model that can operate in days and weeks rather than months and years. So we've been fortunate to have another 60 million pound building, but we're now measuring innovation. Going back to my earlier example, if we work with this company I talked about earlier, first discussion in June, if we launch a new graphene enhanced product in the marketplace in quarter one next year, that's probably less than nine months from initial conversation through to a product in the marketplace. That is really going at pace. And it's not just about the technology, it's also making sure the technology when it comes out the geek is robust enough so that any regulation, certification and testing that's required on the product, we can do that with high level of confidence because if we don't do that, we'll not achieve that time scale and it'll cost more money and it will also take a lot longer time. So, so for me, we've been really pioneering not just the technology, but the whole business model, the whole engagement model and bringing together this supply chain in an innovative way. And for me, that's something we really need to learn more on. In the UK, there's a talk about creating an ARPA. So it's a bit like the DARPA without the D, without the defense. But it's really about this challenge-led, problem-led. So I'll give you an example, aerospace. You should stop thinking about why I'm going to put graphene in an aircraft. But how do I get an aircraft that zero emission, lighter weight, uses less fuel, carries longer range, maintains safety? And how does graphene and 2D material support that agenda? So again, it's another good example. We're really trying to influence different sectors like aerospace or automotive and graphene can play a role in many different organizations and sectors but also in the way we look at the whole market is what we're really trying to achieve. Yeah you know uh, what amazes me is that when people start talking about graphene and what it applies to and what industries that you would be even reaching out to or touching it could be anything from A to Z. I mean you name it and graphene can impact it in some way or another it seems. So. And, and it can, and I think our challenge is to understand where graphene really does create that real competitive advantage or edge. Because yeah. what industry wants is both linear innovation, improvement, but also potentially what I would call more disruptive innovation. Yeah. And again, where graphene and 2D materials play a key role is what we refer to as multifunctionality. A great case study I know you've looked at is Ford Motor Cars, oh, who yeah. about putting graphene into foam. And for me, it's just a great story of, of not just improving light weighting or reducing weight. They also improve thermal efficiency and they also improve the reduction in noise and vibration. So the ability to do two or three things, and, and by the way, it's also flame retardant. So if you do three or even four things, that's yeah. where graphene and 2D materials can really start to provide competitive advantage for, for products and for, for industry. Yeah, absolutely. Ford is a, this year has has the graphene in um, all of their vehicles. So it's that's pretty extraordinary when you stop to think about it. So yeah, so that's that's a great success. Um, well, James, thank you so much for all of your input and um, uh, and for giving us an overview on on what's going on. I, it sounds like you've got um, a, a shift, almost like a, a paradigm shift in in how you're doing your road to market by including this technology, possibly.